Hello and welcome to another Mobilytics video. I'm your host for Caillou, a humble educational YouTuber. And in this one, we are going to be having a look at the top 12 hardest to master champions. By that we mean champions that really keep getting better the more you play them, the more games you put in to really realize that high skill cap and then you begin to see the returns on your gains in LP because remember you have to spend time learning them in order to fully realize their potential. If you are looking for advanced stats, combos, builds and more for these particular champions head to the Mobilytics website which has more information than Eldorado has gold. And now without further hesitation, let's begin. Alright first up we have Akali the solo laner, that's right you can take it middle top lane. And if you were surprised to see her first, then you need to reshuffle your views on reality because she has been prevalent in the right hands for, well, ever. She is very difficult to learn, but once you get the hang of her, you understand the champion's skill ceiling, which is ridiculously high. She will have that disgusting mobility and burst damage that can outplay and juke enemies in several different ways. And this is really great once you understand all the matchups she encounters because... Outplaying enemies means you need to understand your own combos and animation cancels as well as theirs so you know exactly when to use what. The difference between an Akali player and an Akali master lies in the way that you maximize your damage whilst flipping in and out of combat and stealth. You can literally 1v5 an entire team with your burst or you can literally die in a heartbeat and while that won't exactly help your team win at least the other 9 players in the game can have some comedy. Energy and cooldown management are so underappreciated, it's very easy to focus on just bursting your target, but actually, splitting up your abilities and timing them around your energy is most crucial, especially in early skirmishes and laning. One of the more important things which makes Akali so insane when played well is the utilization of her stealth mechanic. Not only does it obviously grunt stealth, which removes you from vision of enemy eyes, it also restores your energy, creates more reason to know when and how to use it, and additionally, you can combine this ability with her E to juke and confuse opponents when engaging and escaping. You can also use this ability near walls or brushes as it extends the range and makes it even more effective. And now when you combine the W Shroud with her ultimate, you have what we would call 200 years mobility and outplay potential. In terms of fun to play design, Akali is one of the best in the game and relies on creative combos and adaptively learning every inch of her kit as well as of course the matchups which simply takes time and practice. And that's why a 10 game Akali player is very different and noticeable from a 100 game Akali player, who in turn would look like an infant toddler to a 1000 game Akali player, and that's why she's one of the hardest to master. Now next up we have Kiana, and she's one of those champions that either carries you or goes 0 and 10, except, you know, with a bit more style than a Yasuo who just straight ints. We all saw from the world's players at the end of last year when they went to the 2k LP range on the super server, everyone's playing Kiana and everyone's doing it well. They go back to the home regions and now when you match up with them, you have literally no idea what you're walking into. Is it a savant or is it a Kiana who simply runs around with a hula hoop? She's another champion who is hugely based on combos and quick thinking to outplay her opponents. She has mobility, executes, burst damage, stealth, CC and all of which has a unique way of being used depending on the situation. A good Kiana can be impossible to shut down even in the early game. As long as she doesn't waste her cooldowns with silly trades in the mid lane, she can simply turn a drive-by gank into a double kill without any much trouble. And this is even more exacerbated if they decide to fight the Kiana next to walls. Her QW combo has three different uses. One deals extra damage, one is a root effect, and one grants her stealth. These are dependent on the terrain around her, so in fights, this requires not only quick thinking to choose between which one is needed, but also how this lines up with the local terrain based upon where the fight is happening. This combo alone shows just how much there is to the champion. And when you talk about game changing ultimates that can swap a game around in an instant, yeah, Kiana has that. But it is incredibly hard to get right. From using it as a one shot on an important target to CCing and dealing huge damage to an entire enemy team. Kiana's ultimate can be used on the most unpredictable wars to catch opponents who didn't even think they were in range. Learning all the different wall interactions with her ultimate plus her combos takes some serious time and can bring a whole different element for opponents to worry about. Although at this point they're probably not thinking about it, but you are because she's the hardest to master and you have done that. You know, after a couple thousand games. Next up we have Vayne. We always have to bring Vayne. Yeah, she can seemingly be very easy to use and basically not seem like something that's difficult to master. That's because she's just a late game scaling monster and she's basically almost exclusively auto attack based with no real use of ability damage. This might make you feel like she's easy to use, but you have to be good at attack moving in order to excel. The timing of Q is imperative to success in fights, clever use of your ult and passive to chase and flank targets, learning that E range and positioning as well as the E flash to maximize self peel and CC, as well as limit and damage testing with silver bolts. This once you have mastered it gives you 1v5 potential and is so much more than simply auto attacking. 
Positioning will obviously be important and key because everyone's going to be focusing you, your support and tanks are not going to understand how to peel, and you kind of have to focus on peeling yourself and basically being that one carry. Teammates will build a play around you if they're intelligent though, so if you actually have that and you can self-peel, you basically have everything you need in order to 1v5 every single game. Again though, you have to get through laning phase, not every lane is just a freebie for Vayne, you have to understand the matchups, which ADCs have more range than you, which ones have better early damage procs, and once you get through that phase, which is always a thing for scaling champions, that's when your knowledge really comes through as you complete items and gain the experience advantage necessary to make all the plays your heart desires. Right next up is Yasuo, and we're used to seeing this champion go 0-10, eventually hit spikes and then, you know, do stuff to you. The thing is, when he was added to the game, League of Legends changed forever. Not only did the 10 death meme sort of be created and forever ingrained in our culture, but everyone wants to be able to play this champion like the pros. We see perks play Yasuo, we think we can do the same thing. Except as easy as he might be in concept, unfortunately most of us in solo queue, especially the majority of new players, leave much to be desired. Again, despite looking relatively straightforward, his kit and playstyle is so unique that it takes some real time and effort to really become great. He has insane mobility, sustain, damage, and can turn any fight due to his creative combos as well as his ultimate. And remember, if they don't have point and click CC, how are you actually going to stop him in place so that you have enough time to do damage and kill him? It's going to be very difficult. Although he can struggle to get off a good ultimate due to the fact he has to rely on his teammates slash Malphite, a good Yasuo will make it happen anyway with a well-timed Q. He has the potential to constantly weave in and out of fights through waves and sustain making him unkillable in the right hands. His main damaging ability is that Q and although it is on a ridiculously low cooldown, it's still a skill shot. This means his entire damage capability comes down to constantly hitting a skill shot. Alongside that, it's incredibly important to maximize auto attack weaving, getting these extra bits of damage and DPS inside your cooldowns and that's the key to trading and fighting in general. Qs, auto attacks and E's are almost constantly being used when playing Yasuo, meaning you are never sitting around waiting for your next move, which means it's always on, always focused, always need to be engaged. You also possess one of the best defensive abilities in the game, Wind Wall. And I love playing Orn Jungle and things like that, so you can imagine me going for a gank at level 6 down the middle of the lane, and then Yasuo just says, no, and he presses W and I lose because of champion design. But at the same time, a good Yasuo knows exactly when to use it. Block a 5-man projectile? Do it. Block 90% of Syndra's damage in 1v1s? Check. Block all of an AD carry's auto attacks in another 1v1? We can do that also. Smart use of this ability, along with his DPS weaving and ultimate usage, are all what make this champion one of the hardest to master. And hey, so is his brother, Yone. Riot decided that League wasn't difficult enough with Yasuo running around and decided let's give a brother. And uh, yeah, frustrating to play against as well as hard to master, that seems to be a genetic code for the brothers. Like his brother, Yona has crazy sustained damage, mobility, and a kit which complements it all perfectly. He can also E to you across the map, and you can be a jungler doing Baron and he'll just do it from bottom lane and you die. Despite being similar to his brother in playstyle and itemization, all my homies hate shield though, the kit has several huge differences. Yone is incredibly adept when it comes to diving, whether that be into backlines or turrets, he can often get in and get out unscathed. Yone's ultimate is exceptionally good in teamfights and good use of it can make or break the game. Being a good Yone mainly comes down to knowing your champion's capabilities. This is the case with several different items depending on your levels, depending on your matchups, and learning all of these things teaches you just how far you can push the limits. And when you understand that, the limits are pretty damn far. Understanding all of this and learning it fully is the real difference between your average Yone player and someone who has doubtlessly mastered him. Yone's Q is not only his main damage ability like his brother, but it also grants him great mobility when used appropriately. You can use it to disrupt, you can use it to escape ganks, but you can also use it well to 2v1 your lane opponent and jungler, and that's a whole different thing altogether. His ultimate can also be combined with this to make his mobility and 2v1 potential even higher. Honestly, watching a nice 3-5 man Yone ultimate is one of the most pleasing things to observe, provided it's on my team or in pro play, I don't want it used against me, that is, that's not fun. Because ultimately, he can use it to also interrupt dashes, prevent game changing abilities, or simply just use it as an escape. And these kind of impulse decisions can really make the difference between any team fight and the ability to solo carry games. And really, that's what mastering a champion is all about. And Yone, you gotta put in the time. And to be honest, we all thought he was long dead, so he has time. Next up, we have the Master of Dutes, Bard. Although some of you might know him as Brad, he likes to toss coins to his ADC. He is an absolute lane bully with well-placed Qs and auto attacks. He has unique stun potential. You think, haha, I'm behind a mini wave. 
Bard says he's gonna stun you. Anyway, Clutch heals and MS boosts with his W. Really, such a great kid in terms of bait potential and mobility. The E-Tunnel serves as a jungler's play thing, which makes us very excited, or also tilts us as the enemy Bard takes his whole team away on a magical journey. You add that combo with the Q and ultimate, you can turn fights, you can block ults, you can stop herald charges, it is really game changing. However, when something is like that, it's very easy to misplay it, making it that much more impressive when good bard mains, one tricks and savans really just wow their teams with their usage. You can kite and escape any difficult situations because of this, and due to that E and due to the Meebs, he has creative ganking and roaming paths for himself as well as his allies when he is really good at understanding all the different angles that you can use. And we'll all know Bjorkson's rise ultimates into Baron Pits, Bard mains can do that with his team as well. If you overextend bottom lane and you show somewhere else, all of a sudden there's a 5 mani into the pit and you lose the crucial objective. Taking the time to understand the combo potential with the RQ, the EQ, the REQ, as well as adopting good meditation practices to match his aura and vibe in game, really he is one of the hardest and best champions to master and one trick. Next up we have Silas the master of two chains. He is a champion who has struggled to find his position recently since a lot of nerfs and changes and adaptations and he has always been ruthless in the right hands. Turns out giving someone access to every single ultimate in the game makes it kind of difficult to balance. And now his kit involves tons of healing, burst, mobility as well as CC. Really a total champion. The reason Silas is so hard to actually just get right is that it's not just dependent on his champion in terms of ins and out combos and matchups, it's League of Legends in general. You have to know every other champion's ultimate and how to use them perfectly at a split second's notice. Same thing kind of like with Viego. When you add that to your existing abilities, you have infinite different outplay potentials due to this particular skill alone. Aside from that ultimate, he is a champion capable of turning the tables in any situation simply due to the healing in his W as well as the CC from his chains. Yes, you might have Q Max Silas for wave clear, detonation, and better matchups in the mid lane, but if he's maxing W and he's top, or he's maxing W anywhere, you have to understand that the W instantly heals him for a percentage of his missing health. You think you got him, and then you, you don't. He has you. It's almost like the Rick Roll of League of Legends. And this scales with AP, by the way, so the further you are ahead, the more you will heal, and the harder you can punish enemy champions. His E is a two-part gap closing ability with a skill shot stun. Does anyone remember the shield that was on that as well? Like this guy needed a shield? The stun, however, is tricky to land, but when it lands, it makes your Q easier to hit as well as everything else. Great Silas players have the opportunity to bait opponents into thinking he's an easy target, and before they know it, he's healed up to nearly full, you're dead, and to add insult to injury, he also stole your ultimate. And if you happen to be Malfighter or that's just tragic. Silas's strength lies in skirmishing and teamfighting. After he secures a bit of ability haste, his abilities are on a super low cooldown and he can use his ultimate twice in some fights. I'm getting a little twitchy reading this as well. He's really a champion that benefits from his opponents underestimating his damage and healing and also understanding how to best maximize the enemy team's ultimates with his team and against the enemy team. Although when you've mastered this champion, the fluidity with how you use the combos with the ultimates is just so satisfying to play, it's so satisfying to watch and if you're going to put in a whole bunch of time to master a champion that's difficult to master, this is a fun one. Now next up we have Ezreal who takes items that are in the game, breaks them and makes them get nerfed. Any jungle Ezreal enjoys. But difficult champions in League of Legends have one common thread. A lot of them are purely skill shot based. You have to repeatedly hit Qs with Ezreal to get your core damage output. You have to learn the burst combos. You have to learn champion limits due to the fact you have low auto attack range. And the thing is, when you get double buffs free bottom lane thanks to the jungler's drive by int, you can truly feel the pain of this champion. Ezreal's damage is maximized in teamfights with passive and Q priority. You have to be careful to use E as either damage, escape or engage. That's kind of crucial. And if you position without the E, you need to know your auto spacing and understanding what the enemy wants to do to you just because you are playing this champion. He has a range of abilities and animation timings as well. And keeping up to date with the constant itemization changes and bullet parts is one of the fun parts about playing this champion because as I said at the beginning, he will take something broken and he will abuse it. His synergy with Mana Moon, his synergy with Sheen, taking AP jungle items mid lane, he's done it all. You add into the fact that he can use a CC on his team to actually maximize his burst and then dodge skill shots with the E flash means maintaining damage while you do that as well as the ability to kite. That's a lot of things to consistently understand, track and dedicate your muscle memory. That's why he's one of the more difficult champions in the game to actually really become great at. However, when you do, oh boy, do you have solo carry potential. And of course, one of the most spammable annoying lines in the game. Next up, we have Aurelia and her statistics in mid and top lane. 
Yeah, it's not that great. We could say it's the better nerf Aurelia joke, however, it's better just to nerf the players who have mastered Aurelia because Vampire accept a full build. Some champions are just so rewarding when you invest the time and practice into them. Aurelia is an absolute force of nature when someone knows exactly how to play her perfectly. She can dart in and out of fights so quickly, and when it's executed well, watching her dive opponents is like visual poetry. Really one of the best redesigned champions and reworks we've had in terms of particles, kits. It's just a champion when you see play wild, you want to do that yourselves. However, you won't unless you put in the time. She's always been famously known as a champion who is hard to master and that definitely has not changed in the current season and I don't think will ever change. She constantly defies the odds and turns fights that should never have even been attempted in the first place. It really is deceptively strong when on low HP and her sustain throughout the waves as well as her AoE stun let her easily bait opponents into thinking they have a chance of punishing her. Combine all of that sustain and mobility with her incredible damage potential and you've got yourself a 1v9 machine. Aurelia even has the potential to camouflage her E into her other ability animations so opponents can't see it coming and that's one of the biggest things that make champions like this really difficult to master. The champion's abilities and possibilities are almost endless. Her Q is one of the highest mobility spells in the game, it has no cooldown when it's used properly and can offer her the chance to dart in and out of fights and waves without hesitation. Correct use of it makes her generally impossible to get a hold of unless you have point and click CC, much like Yasuo. And if not, then she can use the Q expecting that CC to get far enough away that it doesn't hit, she doesn't get punished, and then she can also use it to dive past entire teams and remove carries from existence. That and you can keep healing and use it in teamfights forever. The E is an AoE stun that can be used to get a quick solo kill or it can be used to stun multiple targets in a whole team. And it's the quick thinking ability and the understanding of the range of it that is very narrow and very punishing if you miss it. It will require a lot of practice and control to get right, especially on a frequent basis and within all the scenarios you can find yourself. The huge AoE ultimate though, that's a slow and gives her additional resources and resets to assassinate targets. Once you learn the limits of each of them individually, throwing in the W timing as well, creates ridiculously high skill ceiling package capable of 1v5ing almost any game provided you understand all the limitations and you understand how important it is to hit everything properly. Unless Riot decide to totally rework her again, Relay will remain devastating when the player is pressing the right buttons at the right time. To add in a support to this, the one that's getting nerfed currently last two patches is Thresh. And that's because Thresh is one of the original overloaded champions. Skill shot reliant sure, but if you hit that Q with that disgustingly wide hitbox and you learn the timing of it, the person who gets hit isn't going to be moving very soon. You can stun them, you pull yourself towards them, then you can flay them, then you can lantern in your team to help you, you can also ult them so that they're slowed indefinitely. Really, if someone gets hooked, it's almost 100% death. However, because it has a bit of a windup, quickly learning and predicting opponents pathing to dodge movements and then still hitting your Q, that's where the trick is. You also need to understand the lantern potential and capabilities. Yes, it's for engaging and dragging in your jungler to ganks he didn't want to do. You can also fake a gank with that, by the way. It's also simply used for pulling people out of situations they shouldn't be in to save them from certain death. Or you can simply use it for the shield, which is what was just nerfed. Really understanding that W range and when to use it, really important. Not to mention mastering that E ability because it's a little weird in terms of its angles to use initially. You have to use it to either catch out or simply to peel. Leona's gonna engage, I'm just gonna flay. Orn's gonna E, I'm just gonna flay. The best Thresh players really know the maximum diagonal range of this ability. And then finally, you have to understand the matchups in 2v2 laning. That is almost the same for any ADC and support because the matchups that allow you to actually dictate the pace of the game from that position as well as roam and so on, really begins at level 1 and 2. And then obviously as a support when you're Thresh and Bard, understanding those support roamings, when you can support roam, that's all important, yes. But using your abilities right in those moments with a microsecond of decision making, that's what makes these champions so difficult and what makes Thresh really just an oppressive, always useful support. Right, second to last we have LeBlanc. How many times will LeBlanc make this list in these videos? As far as we're concerned here at Mobilitics, she will always have a place. And yeah, so her kit might seem a little simple compared to some of the newer champions. However, she's been around for such a long time and is still ruining players' days with her mindful outplays. Yes, that's right, it's not always the hands, it's about the brain. LeBlanc's kit is designed to mirror her abilities and improve the effects of them. Each of her baseline abilities can be copied and strengthened with her ultimate depending on the situation at hand. She can pick her choice every single time depending on if she needs mobility, burst or CC, or simply a combination of all of the above. Deciding on these quick combinations is the core to her gameplay and knowing when to use what in all of the lane matchups she can face, 
This constantly changes depending on the circumstances. Not only is it difficult to make these decisions, but it's also difficult to land the abilities. Her Q is the only point and click spell that she has as the others are skill shots, all of which have the possibility to be missed or to be dodged. So not only do you need to be quick with those decisions, you need to be accurate with your skill shots. The thing is, if you decide to play LeBlanc, let me tell you something, as a jungler and a support player, if you hit that stun, it's 100% a free kill on a target. Yes, it's a skill shot, but really, get good at hitting this, junglers will love you, you will get ganked a lot, and now you can roam the map and enjoy throwing magic all over the enemy team. In addition to all of these, LeBlanc has some of the highest Juke and mobility outplay potential in the game. Her W is a dash that can be reactivated to go back to her starting point, so the mind games begin. That's why we love watching Faker on this champion. It can be used over walls and covers great distance, especially with her ultimate, and so offers the chance to get deep into situations and also simply to play insane mind games. How many solo queue games have you seen at any level where enemies are just chasing LeBlanc for minutes on end, and as long as she has mana, she can just keep juking, keep running, all until the game ends? Learning when and where to use these abilities to escape as well as to stun and engage is really what you need to understand with the champion. Are we looking to bait crucial spells with mobility? Are we looking for a burst combo to annihilate the core ADC? Or are we simply looking for multiple stuns and long fights to set up our team? Overall, LeBlanc is one of the OG Juke Master champions who packs a huge burst and frustrating kit to play against. When someone's mastered this champion, there's no end to the skill ceiling and potential. Finally, we're going to have Lee Sin, and you will notice we have some champions here that are not 2020. They just have highly expressive kits that are really fun that people tend to forget about and realize that they're not actually that easy to play. Yes, nowadays we go, oh, an insect, everyone can do that. However, you know, when it was first a thing, it was like mind blowing to watch. The best Lee Sins with the most fluid mechanics and the instantaneous decision making with their combos are just such a pleasure to watch and to observe on your team as well as in pro play. Almost a ridiculous amount of combos to learn, infinite possibilities with his kit mobility, can turn fights on his own with these combos, and also, if you have the perfect vision and you see that 5 men kick, we can do that as well. Every fight is different, every team combo is different, understanding peel and engage, also, understanding how to snowball as a jungler. In a farming meta, you really need to know how to gank, pressure, get leads, maintain leads, and then do your one-shotting capabilities so that the game actually ends. Once you throw in the fact that these are all skill shots, so learning the ranges and travel times is crucial, and really with him, with a melee champion like this that is on the clock as soon as you lock him in, the limit and damage testing takes time and practice. The understanding of what itemization and what builds really suit your playstyle, and then you have to be fluid and efficient with your combos in game. If you make a mistake, you will be punished and you will look funny. It does look funny to watch a Lee Sin flounder around the map, but the thing is, while you learn the champion and put in the time, you're going to make these mistakes and you're going to understand that they're very, very unforgiving from the jungle position as well as from the champion component. As with every other champion on this list, time, dedication, patience, and then a lot of games are what you need to do in order to master this champion and every single one in this video. As always, there are other champions that are hard to master. These are just some 12 great ones that are being underlooked, underused, and really can help you carry games and get to your desired elo. I've been your host, Vakayu. I hope you were able to enjoy and learn something. Please do like, share, and comment if you did. Don't forget to subscribe and pay attention to this channel. All the content's going to be coming fast with all the big brain knowledges you need to climb. Thank you very much for watching, and as always, I will see you all in the next video.